hello everyone on the bench today we have not just a beautiful but a bit rare national receiver and this is the NC 190 now you don't see a whole lot of these out there uh, they were made somewhere between 60 65 in that era and the good thing is you know they have a detector in them and a BFO so they are fairly decent receivers now this one is just in excellent condition uh, you know the paint's good there's a little chip on the edge of the, uh, the front panel up here but you know a little blemish on the top but I mean it's just excellent condition you don't see in this good shape that often and it's got that cosmic blue paint on it but the complaint with this uh, receiver was some AC hum so I'm expecting this probably you know bad filter caps so uh, we're gonna take a look at this and see what I do to get this old thing back working like it's supposed to so uh, I got it plugged into the current limiter and we got the variac here so we're gonna bring this up and see what we can get all right AC main zone we'll go ahead and turn the switch on the receiver turn the volume about halfway we'll flip the limiter on And we'll bring up the power with the Variac. It's about 20%. 30%. About 50% so far, so good. Starting to hear a little noise in the receiver. Up at about 60%. We do have a speaker connected. Turn the volume down. It's up about 85%. And that's all the way. Let's look at the offense. The very talented quarterback uh, for the Cincinnati Bearcats. How's the offense perform? Well, it does seem to sound like a little bit of hum in the speaker, but... Really been clicking. Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter has been clicking. Similar to the offense overall, I thought was kind of... I am noticing some of the, uh... The dial cracking is not accurate. That was 1070 AM. And that was on about uh, 11.5. So yeah, dial tracking is off. Yeah, but I'm not hearing uh, any hum on this end. Maybe just a little bit in it. We'll go ahead and plug directly into AC now. Let me check my polarity on this plug. Yeah. It uses a standard plug, there's no polarity on it. Okay. 
there may not be AC hum that he was hearing. I don't know if y'all can hear this. Let me move the camera closer to the uh, radio. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. But uh, what I'm hearing is transformer hum. And you can feel it in the uh, in the case. Okay, so that gives us a start. We'll go ahead and get this thing opened up. A couple of screws on the side, two in the back, and we we'll get the top cover off. The front of these are put in with a little compression fittings up here so we'll have to pop it up then we'll get the bottom off so here we are a quick look on the inside you can see it's just about as clean on the inside as it is on the outside see this filter network here it's FL1 and FL2 this transformer and these two transformers or subject to silver mica disease and I'll show you I don't think this radio has that problem but I will uh, show you how to check for those so main tuning dial or capacitor here it's antenna IF RF and then our band spread over here on this side same configuration um, BFO adjustment tubes OB2 regulator on a volt I ride 30 rectifier to look at the schematic and see but yeah she's uh, pretty clean on the, the inside now I do have it on and I am not hearing or even feeling that vibration I was hearing a moment ago. I feel no vibration from the transformer. You see there's one of those clips here that that top cover slides into. It's got two little forks on it that clip in on both sides. I'll turn it up on his edge and look underneath. And you can see it's pretty much packed in there. There's the bottom of that can capacitor that we're going to need to replace and you can see the top of it there that's a four section I think it's three 40s at 250 and a 20 at 25 so we'll have to get that replaced other than that there's no other electrolytics in here you can see everything else is these uh, brown type of capacitors and silver mics so no problem with uh, any other electrolytics okay so the plan of attack here uh, zoom in you can see this yellow wire and this one resistor and it snakes off and goes over somewhere towards the back of the radio so it goes right down down that side and over here to this tube socket and that is a 20 microfarad at 25 volt cap so I'll stick a little small cap down there that'll take care of that and then uh, 
that'll give us three more sections to take care of and probably what I'll do is just put a socket in here and mount the capacitors on a plug and plug the capacitors right in so if they ever have to be changed you just unplug it and change them out there'll only be three capacitors on this because that one little 20 mic can just go down at the bottom of the tube base so that's the plan of attack okay I got the uh, old can cap out got a socket installed got my capacitors installed on the plug I gotta get a piece of heat shrink and put around this and we put a disc on the top of it so this can't be touched although it's ground but uh <laughs> like normal amount of heat shrink so I gotta run the lows they carry some about that big around about eight inches long so I'll pick up some of that put around it and uh, that'll take care of the main caps so now if anybody ever needs to replace the caps they just desolder the pins pull the old caps out put new ones in and it'll be good to go what I'm going to do is uh, just go ahead and check to make sure there's no problem with silver mica disease uh, T11 is one of the first transformers and you can see the internal capacitors inside of it so you got your primary and your secondary and there's voltage on the primary and there should not be or next to no voltage on the secondary so we'll look at pin 3 of this uh, IF transformer and see if we see anything So here we can see the bottom of the IF transformer, this is your primary and that's your secondary and this is pin 3 There's a resistor coming off of it and we're going to do is probe that with a voltmeter, a vacuum tube voltmeter and see if there's any deflection on the uh, meter Alright, the radio's powered up We'll look at the primary side first and you can see voltage on the 150 volt scale about 103 volts there now I'm going to go to the secondary and there's nothing so pretty good chance there's no problem with uh, silver mica disease in that transformer but we want to be really sure So what we do is we're going to use a signal tracer. We'll turn the gain up about right there. I can hear some hash. And I'm going to take our probe and I'm going to probe the secondary of that IF transformer. And all we should hear is just a, uh, a low buzz, if anything. And we'll just listen to see if we hear any crashes or loud pops or anything going on. And I'm hearing absolutely nothing but that little low buzz. Take it off, put it back on again. Tapping the uh, lead. And that transformer is pretty much quiet now you do this with no antenna attached because if you attach an antenna I'll just clip the antenna lead on Since alluded to that not, not only is the you know stadiums all right cut the volume down and we should hear that same station this has you know there's great pedigree in this program there's a great history here and anybody who follows college football knows that it was East Carolina we say EC okay that transformer checks out pretty good also uh, T12 is a uh, 230 kc IF transformer we need to check that one along with uh, T13 okay so T12 the same thing we have pin 3 which is a secondary 
and it goes directly to our tube here and we're going to check the primary for voltage and then check the secondary for no voltage okay antennas unplug we'll come here and we're going to check our secondary and our primary first and we see we got over 150 volts and we're going to come over to our secondary on pin 3 and there is no voltage I'll put the signal tracer on it just to be sure and just a little low buzz and to make sure that that transformer is working I'll click the antenna on and take a listen to it with uh, a signal going through it. Okay, no problem with that one. I'll go ahead and check the uh, last one just to make sure, but uh, I think it'll probably be all right also. Okay, so right off the bat, trying to. Uh, Tune T11, which is the first IF core that you would tune. Uh, not getting no response, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. But when you go to uh, 12 and 13, they will tune. Uh, I put the scope on the output, and I'm not seeing anything that's uh, tuning. So it's like the, you know, just nothing going on inside. So I'm going to remove this transformer and see if we have a broken wire or something on the inside okay I got the uh, coil out got the cover off of it and uh, B50103B and it has 54C or it could be 540 it's hard to see I think it's 0 6248 now 10, 11, 12, and 13 are identical in this particular radio. I ohmed out and everything checks okay. You can see the uh, two pins here. And you can also see how this one is constructed. There's a rivet that goes through. That rivet holds the former in place. You can see the two coils on it. In between this top plastic piece here and this bottom is mica sheets with silver impregnated on them. So if you had to change this out uh, due to silver mica disease, you would need to come on the back side and remove this edge of this rivet and I would use a little grinder and just grind it away you also need to desolder these four wires and this way you can pull this tube along with the rivet completely out of the base now you see there's a green dot here and this green dot denotes pin 1 so right across from it is two three and four so if you was to go back and take this out you would need to bend those plates straight up put the core form back in then bend them over this top piece without touching this metal ring that's in here and you can just kind of you know bend them around and bend them back up so that they help hold all this together then you can put a little drop of glue on each side, some CA or something, super glue, whatever. Then you can actually mount your capacitors right back inside of this case. Between one, pins 1 and 2, you would need 155 picofarad. Between 3 and 4 is 190 picofarad. And I will use a uh, silver dip capacitor back in it, and that would... Uh, take care of any silver mica disease in this type of IF transformer so since I didn't find anything wrong here 
I did go ahead and remove the slugs. I removed both of them out of the top, turn them over, and put them back in. That way that they fresh screwdriver slot. Uh, this bottom core, somebody had used metal on it, and it was chipped. So uh, my ceramic tuning tool wasn't fitting in it too good. This way it'll be, uh, it'll have fresh screwdriver slots on each side. I'm going to go ahead and get this put back together and put it in. We'll have to start looking for another problem. Okay, I got the transformer back in. All connected. Um, feeding the signal back into it. And I did notice that uh, right to start with that my signal is now up from where it was. So uh, let's see what happens if I try to tune it. Ah, uh, look at that. Yep. Tuning the bottom slug now. And that's pretty much peaked out right there. So, uh, <laughs> that's kind of strange, even though we didn't find anything wrong in the coil. Um, apparently, there was either a loose connection or something going on in there. Because now it is tuning. Interesting. Anyway, you, know, you hear people talking about silver mica disease. And they call it the dreaded silver mica disease well it's not nothing really dreaded about it yeah it's a nuisance it's a pain it is a disease that you get in these radios because it's uh, silver migration on the plates but guys that's not hard to fix the only thing that uh, really becomes an issue is when you do not know what the value of the capacitors are so that's not a big thing either they're going you know zero to 200 all you need is a variable capacitor uh, go in remove the micas put it back together and you can come right here on these two terminals and mount a variable capacitor and do it on both sides then go back and tune the radio and tune that variable capacitor until you get a peak and then tune your your core your slugs inside once you do that remove the variable capacitor um, put it on your capacitor tester see what the value it reads do the same for the other side pick that capacitor you can solder them right here across the uh, the two terminals or in this case in this one you can put it right inside no big deal okay to start the uh, alignment of this uh, national NC 190 we're going to connect the vacuum tube voltmeter to the junction of R23 and C43 yeah that's correct <laughs> I had to go back and make sure so we're just going to clip a voltmeter on to pin 4 of I think this is T13 <clears throat> and we're going to inject a signal of 230 KCs into the mixer section of the main tuning cap So as you can see we're clipped on to the uh, last tuning gain on the main tuning capacitor. RF gain completely wide open, volume up uh, so you can hear the tone. The uh, main capacitor is fully open for least amount of capacitance, BFO, um, AGC, ANL, off. 
band spread at the set point of the amateur band and we'll get all the voltmeter connected and we'll tune FL1 and FL2 you see these little tuning studs sticking out most of the time there's glue on it but I can see this glue has been removed so I know they have been tweaked on most of the time we wouldn't bother even messing with these if it has the original glue on it but these the glue is missing so uh, we'll need to tune those So as you can see, we are getting only a very little um, bit of needle reading, and we're on the uh, 1.5 volt scale. So uh, something is way out of adjustment. So I'm gonna tune FL1. See that peaked up a bit. I'll try FL2. Alright, so that came up just a little bit. So next thing we want to do is tune the top and bottoms of T11, 12, and 13. So let's see, get into T11 here. Okay, we got T11 up. Um, <laughs> so I... I think I hit the wrong button on the camera and didn't get it all recorded. And we'll go to uh, T12. See if we can pick it up a bit. Oh yeah. Look at the bottom one. Now you can see I'm using a uh, ceramic insulating tuning tool and even it affects it just a little bit. Now we'll go to the last IF can.
Oh, this pretty much has that peaked out. So the IF alignment is done. Okay, our manual tells us to uh, set our signal generator frequency to uh, 2215 kilocycles and adjust L7, which is right here, and it's just another transformer that you can adjust from the top to the bottom. And I put it in here and start to adjust. We get absolutely nothing. Nothing is changing. And this thing should produce two peaks. There's one at the bottom and then one on up. Which will be the second peak. Is what you'll need to adjust to. Well, I've run this coil all the way up, all the way down. And we get no deflection on our DC or AC um, vacuum tube voltmeter. So something is going on in this section here. So I'm looking here at our schematic and we can see L7 right here. And it feeds, you know, V3, which is the second mixer and oscillator. But right here, we have a com uh, mechanical connection. This is on switch 1A and it's on the rear side of it. So I'm just wondering if there's something going on with this switch where it's not uh, um, working properly. Okay, so our switch is the uh, first wiper here, just behind the uh, band switch control. And there's a small piece of coax cable that runs up to our circuit up there behind L7. So I just want to try a little experiment here. And I think we just found the problem. I'm going to go ahead and clean this switch again and make sure the contacts are uh, working like they're supposed to. Well, you solve one problem and you create another. I went ahead and screwed the coil all the way down and screwed down with no problem. But then, when I would try to go back up so I can watch the peaks, the coil stuck. And um, nothing I can do will get it to turn. And I don't want to break it or mess the coil former up and twist it around. So I'm going to have to work on that just a bit. As you can see I got the uh, IF can or this transformer out. It's not really one of the IFs. It's just L7. You can see it's just a coil with a center tap on it. It's only three legs used. And if you look here closely, if I can keep it in frame, you can see that the slug is screwed right to the bottom and then into this brass base. And that's probably what stuck it. <laughs> and trying to screw it out, I broke the end of the uh, tuning tool off. So what I'm about to do is mark these three wires to the pins and then see if I can get this core former out of this uh, bottom then maybe I can manipulate that core without breaking anything well as you can see I had to get medieval on it um, that's what's left of the inner core and the problem was it was cracked so screwing down won't no problem but trying to get back up she no go and uh, I'm going to have to now clean out this tube the tube and core is completely fine I just got to clean it out and get the correct um, slug or ferrite back inside of the uh, core formula which shouldn't be a problem you know it's the kind of things you'll run into from time to time depends on what people has used to uh, try to tune cores with Got to use the right tool. Okay, transformer is all back together. New slug is already in. And, uh, no problems tuning it. 
Make sure it works fine. I got it set somewhere about where it needs to be in that range. Uh, I shouldn't be screwed all the way to the bottom. But uh, when I'm figuring the core was probably already cracked, and when I tried to screw it down, it wouldn't go back the other way. So uh, anyway, I'm put this back together now and get it back reinstalled. Okay guys, now that the IF section is straightened out finally, um, we're going to connect the signal generator through a 68 ohm resistor directly to the antenna terminals. We will put selectivity to 3.0. Our band spread will be here on the set side and we'll adjust the uh, main tuning for the frequency that we'll be adjusting and the first one will be 6 kilohertz okay so if we look here we can see I have the uh, needle set and it's just a little bit past 600 and that's the peak what we're going to do we're going to adjust L1 to calibrate the needle so that our dial is reading accurately then we're going to adjust T1 for maximum output okay so L1 is located right here and what I'm going to do I'm going to turn the volume up Set our dial for 600. Then we'll adjust L1 until it comes on frequency. Use this Okay. Now we're going to come up here and just T1. Yeah, T1 for maximum output on our vacuum tube voltmeter. And that is pretty much peaked out where it was at. Okay, so in the same setting we want to set the generator for 1.5 megahertz. We're going to tune all the way down. You'll hear some birdies on the way through there. Well, that's not good. megahertz I'm hearing it around 1170 so that is way off okay so I'm going to hit set it to 1.5 and I'm going to tune C60 uh, C66 and hoping that this thing will come into range. even came in the range being that far off. Now we want to tune C71. Okay so L2 is located right up here behind the uh, main tuning dial. And, uh, we'll go ahead and get it adjusted. See can't we bring that back on frequency.
So now what we want to do is tune T6 and T2. It's your RF and antenna. Get the uh, volume tone up a little bit. T2 is already peaked. For T6. peak on T2. I guess y'all couldn't see that. Scrambled, got him out of the pocket, avoided the rush, which is what he did do a couple drives ago when they got Great job on the left side of the pull-off into the line right there. Kind of reaching and hooking. <laughs> 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 Well, there you go guys another old classic back in operation now, I didn't want to bore y'all with tuning each band because you know it's follow the manual and it's just like it is on the first two it's the same thing all the way through tune the mixer peak the oscillators all you have to do very simple uh, work and as you see you know yeah we had a few problems uh, want nothing that we couldn't fix the old uh, receivers back up and running like it should be now and uh, should produce many more years of service so uh, I hope y'all enjoyed that it's uh, been a while getting this one on the bench and uh, cause I know it had a few problems to track down and just so other much stuff going on you know uh, I will say it was kind of strange my uh, the last video I did on that Halicrafters 153A I don't know what happened apparently uh, YouTube recommended that thing to a, a lot of people and if you go back and look at, the, at my videos for the past year you see two to four thousand views per video even though I'm at uh, 12,900 uh, subscribers, I believe what it is at this current moment, uh, you only get, you know, 3 to 5 percent of them that actually view your content. And I'm thinking maybe it was, has something to do with uh, YouTube's algorithm. In fact, I even talked with Dave on EEB blog and a few others in a thread there about it. But in four days, that video went to 12,000 views. That was kind of strange. And uh, within a week, it had passed my subscriber count. And uh, I'm thinking, what in the world? And uh, apparently, uh, YouTube just recommended it to a lot of people. So I was real happy to see all that. I wished all my videos would... do that you know but the audience is kind of small in this type of repair work but you know I'm happy to get all the views and we'll just have to see what this one goes now I've got four or five other videos already in the queue uh, 
I got back on the S38, got it finished up. The old uh, helicopters that we started on a little over a year ago. I finally got it finished. A few projects for other people that's been finished up. And uh, I'm working on some of the big stuff now. And I want to go ahead and get this one done so I can get it back to the customer along with his uh, Johnson Navigator. So anyway, hope y'all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, you know, always please give me a thumbs up. It really helps. If you haven't already, subscribe. I appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.